Welcome back to Novice Explorer Radio. This week, the explorers bump into fellow Brits who pass on some valuable tips. The forecast is getting hot, 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 and they get a delightful sunset shot. We woke up, packed the van, and left the very busy motorhome stopover. This is not our style, but served us well for a free one-night stay. We drove north into more rural surroundings. So fingers crossed we're only a matter of minutes away from where we should be, although it doesn't feel quite right somehow, does it? We're in the middle of nowhere, and I can't see the <laughs> sea. It's uh, very rural at the minute, and obviously just fields, no buildings, you can see for quite a way, but it just doesn't feel like we're gonna come out anywhere that's going to have a parking spot, I don't know, it's just a, I'm, I'll, I'll reserve judgement, but it doesn't look very promising at the minute. So we found the spot, it looks quite nice, was not expecting this at the end of this road. Um, we aren't really sure how long we can stay here for, how many nights, but we're going to find out later. There is a restaurant and some bins. I suppose if we have a drink in the restaurant, we can use the toilet. Oh, yes. Um, but uh, it's time for a bit of lunch. We skipped breakfast, so I'm absolutely starving. So I have toasted the remaining bit of baguette we had, which was going a bit stale. And we've got <laughs> some cheese and um, salami and things like that. Right, this is uh, the cool box, often doubles up as a makeshift table. After lunch we went and explored the surroundings. The man-made dikes revealed the smallest tidal harbour in the Netherlands, normally only housing two fishing boats. We had a fantastic night last night. We made some friends for the first time on the road. Um, so shout out to Fiona, Kev and Jackie. Um, we sat out for possibly best part of six hours. Um, the first time that we've stared up at the stars and actually sat out of a night time. Um, we had the candles go in the and protect us from the uh, mosquitoes and they were full of great advice um, great comfort to us when we were telling them about our worries and we were worried about doing this no 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 don't be and um, so we will be exchanging email addresses and uh, they've been doing it on and off the road I think from what they gathered yeah mostly on though yeah mostly on for about three years and it's their retirement and we just love it comparing stories already we haven't done very much but though those guys are from scotland um the couple are based near oban and we're like yeah we know oban oh it's just lovely wasn't it mm -hmm. um and we're staying with them for another day here on the free campsite we've just done the washing up and in general we're going to give the van a little bit of a once over uh, one thing uh, we are definitely going to do is move items such as our coal. This has been under the bed since we left. Charcoal. Oh yeah, charcoal. This has been under the bed since we left Shropshire all those weeks ago now and we're actually going to put this in the roof box along with other bits and we're going to get stuff out of the roof box like our little foldable chairs. Okay, so that wasn't as stressful as I thought it could be, but the sun is making it a little bit more difficult. So, what do we want out of there first? Two chairs out. That's our chairs. Is there anything you want to say to people that are thinking about having a roof box? Think about placement. <laughs> of course, our build sort of evolved as we went along, so we didn't know we were gonna have surfboards, particularly on the roof. And it, it does work, but um, it's not the easiest, yeah. is it? But I mean, we're working around it. It's just learning, you know, things aren't always that straightforward. Um, and just really think about what needs to go up on the roof. 
So one of my jobs is to have a look and have a tidy up underneath the bed. We've now got more room because we've moved the charcoal and the pee pee bowl. And I'm just assessing what food we have. Got that box of food there. That white box is full of shoes. When I say full, it's just a pair of walking boots each and a pair of flip flops each and a pair of trainers each. Got some pickled stuff and then that black bag is the levelers which we have used twice let's have a look what food we've got in my box so this is just some of the stuff that we keep under the bed um it's a bit like a um a pantry so this is our backups of stuff really peanut butter tahini tins of beans tomatoes chickpeas things like that and we've got backup ketchup hot sauce and mayo so i'm now going to show you what's in the actual food cupboards underneath the cooker so let's have a little look see so in the bottom one is all the kitchen utensils and the cookware so plates saucepans grater frying pans toasting pan drainer bit of tupperware and a strainer and in this one is all of the the food that we kind of use every day so a bit of fruit that's been kept out the way kind of long life option for bread so we've got some wraps so I think we're going to be having those for lunch today. The van noodles, got some nice noodles to do something a bit more exciting with. Good old corned beef, a bit of curry paste, mustards, uh, pickle, tomato paste, maple syrup, seasonings and stuff like that. Good old garlic paste. This is the cup of soup and the snacky bits. And a bit of cereal. And we've got another box. Yes, the handles broke on this one too. And here we've got more jars of things. Uh, pasta sauces, quinoa, rice, nuts, pasta sauce, gravy granules, apricots, rice, things like that. So we could, if there is a zombie apocalypse, we could last for a few weeks. But then if we engage in um, foraging and things like that and rations, we'd last a lot longer. So I'm prepared, so don't worry. It's just the gas and the water that will be an issue. At this point in our van life journey, we felt at home, relaxed and excited about the adventure that lay ahead. Our new friends had reignited our desire to explore and see so much more of Europe, inspiring us to push ourselves and truly make the most of it. We had felt a little lost and anxious after arriving on European soil, but it was time to be more spontaneous, loosen up and embrace what we had worked so hard for. I think this is the first time that we're truly embracing being outside. We've got the chairs down out of the roof box. Other than that time that we sat on the rock outside Castle, Castle Bay, Bay, wasn't it, on the way back to um, back to the mainland of Scotland, this is the first time we've eaten outside. So. Yeah. Not or tea, tea anyway, you can't count lunch. Lunch is always outside. Mm, I suppose, that's fair. But it feels like a bit of a moment with the chairs is what I think we're trying to get at. <laughs> On our last evening, we decided to watch the sunset from the top of the dike. We must remember to make the effort and get outside and witness sights like these. This is what van life enables you to do. To see the same sunset from a different place each night.
Join us next time as we make our way towards Germany and check out a fortified village. Thank you for watching, and if you've liked what you've seen, give us a like, subscribe, and make sure you press that bell button to get notifications.